Adam in Cleveland, Tennessee. See more better your neighbor here in North Carolina at freeprescriptionlenses.com. And today I'm going to cut the invisible bifocals with transitions extra active gray and the blue flash mirror for your Oakley. This is the 5038 color 05, excuse me, 22, the matte black and the 53 eye size. Let me take everything out of the original packaging that you happen to send it to me in. Now I do offer this frame, but he already had it. He had some lenses, some invisible bifocals he didn't care for, wanted to upgrade to the Transitions Extra Active with the blue flash mirror. And of course, one thing I do anytime someone gets the invisible bifocal, and if they're mailing me their frame, I ask them to put a dot on each lens directly in front of their pupil before mailing it to them to him but since we're both southerners I get to say bless his heart he couldn't use uh, the marker to write on here with the anti-glare coating that he had but uh, I didn't realize they already had his prescription in there so I was able to put it in here find out there's little laser engravings in every um, invisible bifocal and is able to tell me exactly where everything is sitting and I could take the measurements that I needed and then order the lenses for his frame. Now I do offer this frame if anyone wants to buy it brand new, but in the short term, I'm gonna take out his original lenses and pop these out. Oh, almost lost that screw, almost, almost. That would have been fun crawling around on the floor trying to find that. Get back in there, get in there, get in there. I'm going to remember that when I'm putting the lenses in it. So, righty tighty. Do the same thing on this side. Lefty loosey. Don't take it out all the way. Pop the lens out. I still wanted to pop out. Oop, oop, there it goes. It's in the case. It's in the case. So, let me do this. Where's the tray here? I'll do this one. Let me dump this over. Get that out. We're going to use this tray. So nothing gets lost. We're going to keep everything inside there. Everything inside. So, stay with me on this journey. I'm going to show you how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. So, first thing I want to do is try and clean out the inside bevel of the frame. Nothing personal. I do this on every frame that someone has mailed to me. Just in case there's any sweat, debris, makeup, which I don't think is Adam's case, but it does happen um, for the women's glasses. But I just want to make sure there's no particles inside that inside bevel because I'm going to put it into the tracing element of my blocker. But first I want to assign this barcode to it, Secret Agent 1293. The reason why I'm doing this is once I cut the lenses one time, should Adam need any more lenses, I can mail them right to his home and I'll show you how to put them in where you don't drop the screw. So that little stylus is going to go around and trace the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. You buy a genuine authentic Oakley frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed, reimbursed for this purchase, whether they are prescription or not. Adam, you know you need a prescription in here. So in just a moment, as soon as it quits buffering, it will tell me the shape of the lens I'll be cutting tonight. Come on, show me something, show me something. Pop up on the screen, pop, pop. And that is it. We're going to move on to the next screen. I'm going to enter his pupillary distance, which is 29 for each eye. The computer starts at 32.5, so I'm going to tap this minus button a few times till we get down to 29. I want to raise the optical center up, the height of the invisible bifocal, to 19.5, so I kept pressing that plus button until I got there. Now, I've already gotten your lenses prepped, which is the right and left. As I mentioned, the invisible bifocals have little laser engravings on there. There's two little circles inside this lens that I dot. And then when I put that on there, it tells me where to place the height of the invisible bifocal. So, we're going to come down here. This is a block, or as I like to call him, Jenny from the block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. Did I just drop that? Alright, let's get another one. You don't pay me enough to bend over this time of day. So I need two double-sided adhesive stickers. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick this onto the first one. Toss it up on the platform. Do the same thing for the second one. 
on the back is a little silver button that is a magnet that's going to attach itself twice tonight the first time to another magnet here in the arm let me pull the paper away to make the black side sticky line that up and these are progressive lenses so i need to change the layout chart the blue cross is the geometric center of the frame your eye is just above that and inset so that black dot goes there these other two black dots tells me that it's oriented in there just perfectly and check that make sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame it is I'm going to hit this button. The arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing for the lens that ain't right, which will be played by the part of the left lens tonight. Line up the magnet, pull the paper away, or vice versa. Line up the, pull the paper away, then line up the magnet. Let me see here. I've got a dot on that lens that is throwing me off. It's a clear dot, but it looks like a black dot in here, and I only want to see one black dot. Same pupillary distance, same optical center height, and get everything lined up exactly where it should be. Hit that button, the arm comes down, places the block onto the left lens. Now this is the edger, this is what's going to do all the work while I run my mouth. It weighs 200 pounds, it costs $40,000. I recommend everyone go out, buy their own, put it on your kitchen counter, then you can cut your own lenses at home, and you won't need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. Let's wake up the computer. Remember this is shape 1293 or program 1293, number 1293, 1293 there. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high index plastic or Trivex, I would select that. I'm not gonna polish the edge of the lens because it won't be seen. I'm not gonna put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens, but I will, will put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. And uh, I'll go over that a little bit later. Press this on there firmly. Line up the magnet into another magnet there in the chuck. And of course, by now, you know I like to call it the Charles because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it Chuck. Now, if anyone can think of a funnier joke, write it down on a $100 bill and mail it to me and I will write it, read it on the air and give you credit. You don't even have to include your name. I'll recognize your handwriting. Trust me, I'll give you credit for it. After I take that cash, cash money, hit the green arrow to start in every language. The door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's tracing the outline of the right side of the frame. And the old carpenter saying, measure twice, cut once. It's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel. So you have the least amount of edge thickness showing, of which with your prescription in this frame, it'll be minimal. But I do cut very strong prescriptions all day long for how much? For free, would you buy the frame for me? And that does become a little bit more critical with the higher powers. Now, the light that you see flickering in the background is water there. That's running to catch the optical sawdust as it comes off the cutting wheel. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry, where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet. Meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle for those materials. Now, water will spray onto this lens for the last 20 seconds just to wash away any optical debris that you see beginning to form on the edge of the lenses. But as I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high impact ballistics grade lenses. The same lens materials that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and flying debris. Speaking of protection, these lenses also have 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin there in Cleveland, Tennessee. This is permanent and never needs to be reapplied, unlike the lotions, creams, and sprays that need to be reapplied when you're in direct exposure to the sun. Now, you got the transitions extra active. You also got the Crizol, excuse me, the blue sapphire mirror that has a does not have the Crisol anti-coating on the back surface. It has its own brand of, of anti-glare coating, which is pretty cool. This blue actually looks like I have the Crisol Sapphire on mine, so it almost looks like, which Sapphire, hence the name, it has a blue hue, hence the name Sapphire, but it almost looks like the, the Crisol Sapphire, just a little bit more pronounced, just like a really cool anti-glare coating which is the blue flash mirror while indoors. Now you actually do have an anti-glare coating on the back surface. Now here's a good test. Oh, I'll do that later with mine. We'll show you a little later. We'll 
I'll show you later. But right now you can get any of the six mirror coatings of silver, gold, green, blue, red, or pink. So the water has begun spraying, which tells me it's in the last 20 seconds. Now the transitions extra active without the mirror are available in three colors, gray, brown, and the green G15. However, as I've sadly learned last week, you can only put one of the six mirror coatings on the gray and the brown. No mirror coatings are available on the green lens. I'm very sorry to have to report this. I've learned that the extract of green, because it is so new, it's made in one lab. The mirror coatings are applied in another, and that's why you can't get the mirror coatings on the green for now. Now, begin with this being new technology, hopefully within the year. This is January 2000. 19. Hopefully you'll be able to get one of the mirror coatings on the green lenses soon enough, but for now it ain't going to happen. So I'm just going to dry everything off. Check the back surface of the lens. Make sure there's no optical sawdust. We're going to do a little bit. What do I need? The Phillips head. Where are you at, Phillips? Come on, Phil. There you are. The red handle. Do a little. Now, years from now, Adam, if you ever need new lenses for this frame, again, your shape has been barcoded in there, your pupillary distance, the optical center height. So what I'm going to do is, what I recommend you doing is getting a baking dish, a glass baking dish or a baking pan, which is fairly large. Take a paper, well not a paper towel, take a t-shirt, a white cotton t-shirt, and drape it over the glass pan or the metal pan. The reason why that is, if the screw happens to come out, and bounce onto a hard surface. It will bounce off of there onto the table and onto the floor. So the, the paper towel, now what you can do is loosen it just a little bit. Hopefully it doesn't come all the way out, but we'll see what happens if it does. But uh, it will just, essentially it's like a shock absorber. So, but I'm gonna not take it out all the way. I'm gonna tuck it in at the outside corner and using my thumbs, press down at the nose. S being very sneaky, I'm gonna put my finger over that screw which it ain't gonna happen, so I'm gonna have to back it out a little bit more. A little more. Put my finger over the screw and with my thumb press down here until it goes in. Now I'm gonna do righty tighty. But again, if you take the screw all the way out, just make sure you hold the frame upside down while you insert the lens. Now I'm gonna tighten everything back up to make sure it's closed all the way, and it is. Just check the bevel on the front to make sure everything is in there, and it is. Now we can start cutting the left lens, flip that over to L, press the, the block onto there firmly, line up the magnet and the Charles, the Chucky baby, the Chuckster, hit the green arrow just like before the door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses. Again, first thing making sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame. And you can see as it's tracing the left side of the frame. And just like before, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Look at that, a plus lens in a metal frame. That's why I use the thinner, lighter weight lenses. Also, I did not order the lenses until this came in. I measured the base curve of the... Let's pop this off. Use my hand-approved drying method. Throw that on there. Take that sticker, add it on there but I use my Geneva lens clock and I measured the base curve of these lenses and I also measured the base curve of the frame by pressing that against the front and measuring and I made sure to order the appropriate curvature of lens to match the frame. Oakley has some high wrap frames. This one's on the lower end. It's mostly straight. Some of them are very curved but I make sure to that's what you get when you get from me. I'm a licensed professional optician. I'm going to make sure the lenses match the curvature of the frame for the best, highest quality cosmetic look, as well as, well as the functionality. Now, all this talk, I'm almost about to rub the optical centers off, or got washed off, so I'm going to dot that on there. I'm going to come down here to my lensometer, spin the axis wheel to 80, put it in above that dot, close the clamp and read the power, and I am getting plus 25 one tick mark away from zero that's because the unit of measurement we use in the optical world i'll put these back in there and i'll clean these up when i mail them to you it's called a diopter spelled d-i-o-p-t-e-r starting at zero it goes up in quarter increments 0.25 
all the way up so you're on the you only need one step of nearsighted correction you are mildly far-sighted you have the smallest amount of magnification you can have in a lens that's why there is a plus sign um, your lens is magnified now most of your prescription is astigmatic meaning that you need astigmatism correction you have two curves on your eyes a nearsighted curve this way an astigmatic curve this way and that's how you line up those two curves to make everything nice and crisp so you have an additional two steps of astigmatism correction at the 80th meridian a straight line is 0 to 90 to 180 we're going to turn that fine tune knob and uncorrected astigmatism makes sixes and eights look alike or the letters P and F so once everything is the correct size once it's magnified or minified but in your case magnified to the correct size we have to take away the fuzzy edges and we're going to turn that fine tune knob just shy of the 90th meridian to about 80. now same power for the left eye but you have three steps of astigmatism correction and we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 90. now these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with this last number could be anywhere from 0 to 180. here's another nice thing so your distance correction is one step plus 25. the bifocal strength which is referred to as the ad mean because in addition to what's up here you need that to see up close so if you were to buy over-the-counter reading glasses you would actually get 150 because you add 25 to one and a quarter and you get 150. so but let's check the astigmatism correction in your left eye and we're ending up at minus a quarter we went from plus a quarter in the black to minus a quarter in the red if you had 25 cents and you owed someone else 50 cents you would be 25 cents in the red that's where we ended up here the left eye we're going to end up starting at plus a quarter end up at minus 50 because again if you had to subtract 75 cents away from 25 cents you would be 50 cents in the red so let's dry everything off run my thumbnail around to make sure there's no optical sawdust on the back where's your frame i left it in here here we go again cover this up lefty loosey and i'm going to go ahead and take it out all the way just to demonstrate and sometimes i'll try and keep my finger over that while i'm working on it we're going to take the lens we're going to tuck it in in the top of the frame first very gently we're going to move that eye wire over the rest of the lens before move, pushing it in i've got my finger on the screw here but i just want to run my thumbnail around to make sure that everything is in there smoothly that no portion of the lens is protruding from the frame now we can again with the frame tilted over so the screw cannot fall out and bounce on something hard and then disappear i'm going to do a little bit of righty tidy once i get it close i do a visual inspection i'm going to lay your frame down on a rubber mat to protect the the finish of the frame against the hard table finish tightening that up go ahead and take this block off it is no longer needed pull the sticker away use my hand approved drying method for any moisture that's on there throw that back in the bin let's see where to stick this sticker oops see it's coming away there so i'm going to use this one to press down on that just to help keep it shaped give it a little bit of girder and come down here turn the fine tune knob to 90 read the power oops do i even see a sticker no i don't so now the fun part let's come back down here we're going to oh there's a dark one right there at the edge we're going to darken that one and once that is on there i'm going to line up those two dots and put one right there in the center i can turn that off now come back down here to the marco lensometer place that in just below the reticle and i'm reading where's the flashlight again plus a quarter one tick mark away from zero you have three steps of astigmatism correction i'm going to check that you have three skinny lines in there hopefully you can see what i'm seeing the three skinny lines and then when i turn this of course i can't see up close because i need a progressive we end up at let's see let me look in here first yeah we have three thicker lines we went from three skinny lines in the middle to three thicker lines that are a little bit more separated at minus 50. so that was three steps away your pupillary distance in each eye 29 for each eye from the center of your nose outward the center of your pupils is 29 millimeters this way and 29 millimeters this way for a total of 58. 
I'm going to turn the card around, place the PD stick against my thumb on your right lens, and then when we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 58. And you'd see that clearly if the numbers weren't worn away from me wearing this thing every day. In fact, I'm going to call the lab I just ordered from today, U.S. Optical Fastest Lab in America. I get my single vision and line style bifocals from them. I get my progressives from Essilor. Although this is an Essilor lab, but they just don't have all the lenses. They don't have this one. They don't have the mirror coatings yet. So I still order these from Essilor and a 100% Essilor lab. This is a 51% Essilor lab. They used to sell Zeiss. They don't anymore. Why am I telling you all there? This lab's dirty laundry, but getting 58. I want to check the optical center height where the invisible bifocal rests at 19.5 and then when we hold it up to the bottom of the frame we're getting 19.5 can you see that can you see that man the kit is good i could not have done a better job if i'd cut these lenses myself so again this is the portion in every video that as i clean your lenses i mentioned that when you get these in the mail there is a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight however there's an 80 percent chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of the population has one ear that is higher than the other, and I'm no different, and I'll show you in just a moment. But because of that statistic, 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So just stop by your local place and tell them if it's too loose or too tight or high on one side. They'll know what to do. It only takes about 30 seconds to a minute to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly. Yes, I have gotten the comments. I will be making a video showing you how to adjust your glasses in the future. I'll try and get that up there. I'm going to start doing some other things, some simple repairs to frames, terminology of frames and how they're applied. Doing something a little bit more educational so you don't have to see me cutting lenses all the time. So, this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to activate them now. You have the Transitions Extra Active. I have the Transition Signature 7. And my Oakleys, mine retain about three to five percent hue while indoors. Yours retain about five to seven percent hue. Now, as I mentioned, I'm gonna get these in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them down and press down. There is no wobble. Now, in mine, I have the same type. This is known as the Pilot Temple. It is straight because with a if you can imagine a fighter pilot wearing a helmet, you can slide these on and off a lot easier without having to take your helmet off. I'm wearing the Ray-Ban 8132 in color 05, which is the universal blue. By the way, you're going to be getting an orange cleaning cloth. Hopefully you're a Tennessee Vols fan. I know you're just outside Chattanooga, but I didn't know who you root for. Don't worry. The... And yes, I field test every cleaning cloth before I ship to make it. So if you see a wrinkle in there, you know that it works. But the, whoa, these are not Auburn colors. This is my hometown baseball team, the Durham Bulls. And they have blue orange. It was a movie uh, with Kevin Cosner a few years ago. Maybe you saw it. Um, but that's why I wear the blue orange. I love anything blue orange. But as I mentioned, I'm part of that 80%. My other glasses, when you press down, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. Those are my big, strong magnifiers. Adam will know what I'm talking about. We all The invisible bifocal has extra plus in the bottom. Now, this one is very strong. I have strong up top, even stronger at the bottom. But if I'm trying to tighten to check and see if there's a, a black screw is stripped in a black frame, these are my surgery glasses. I can't see farther than the screen right here. I have my computer distance in the top and super strong at the bottom. That's why I keep those there for an inspections. But I flip that over, press down. There is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and that neither temple is, a, is off skew. Check the tension on each spring hinge. That's the same. So again, this is what your lenses look like clear. I'm going to go ahead and expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light in my little transitions box. As you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for, for transition lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside. 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, Adam, pay attention now. This is important. Everyone else watching too, all transition lenses will get dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple of weeks or exposed to the sun. After that, they'll work for years at maximum performance. The only time that my lenses, the transition signature seven lenses won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun all day. 
and that's why they don't turn dark in a car. Now these extra active lenses will get 30 to 50% dark in a car. Now they're also temperature sensitive, meaning they'll get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable, nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside. Having said that, the extra active lenses that you're getting, Adam, will get darker outside in hotter weather. They're designed for extra active people, hence the name. So this is what they look like the first time they've been activated. Don't worry, they're going to keep getting darker. Come on, Adam, we talked about that, don't you remember? Now, straight on, you see the dark gray, and as I keep running my mouth, it's going to get lighter and lighter. And at certain angles, you're going to get that blue flash mirror. That is really, really cool. As I keep talking, it's going to turn back to lighter. And the, the blue will be less pronounced. But that is it. Again, you can get this mirror coating in six colors. Silver, gold, green, blue, red, or pink. And this, of course, is the blue on the extra active gray lenses. Most people like gray lenses in a black frame or brown lenses in a tortoise frame. And again, there is the extra active green that you can put in any color frame, but you just can't put the mirror coating on top of that. Now, if you've liked what you've seen, please subscribe to my YouTube channel to see more of these types of lenses and frames. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com, on Twitter as freerxlenses. If you have any questions about what I can or can't do, so I am an authorized Oakley dealer, but I'm not allowed to put them on the website. So Adam contacted me originally about he thought he had to buy the frame he didn't realize he could mail me his frame to do lenses and i'm very easy to work with so i told him sure mail me your frames and i'll put the new lenses in it as you've just seen now but if you have any questions you can email me on the contact me button on the page or email me directly at uh the contact button on the website that is or you can email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com or anyone else who has a question or comment you can leave it in the comment section below adam why don't you leave a comment down there when you get these let me know what you think about these lenses i also send out a selfie request i'd love to have your picture on the website in fact send me two pictures one with these clear and then one with them activated outside showing the mirror coating of the you may have to hold your head or the camera at the right angle to capture that um he just contacted me he wants uh, i think the ray-ban 2027 the predator 2 if that no 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 i apologize that was someone else who i'm cutting oakley lenses for he wanted the um, the folding Wayfarers in a certain color, the color mix that you can only get from Rayban.com. Now, even though I'm an authorized dealer, they have a retail end and a wholesale end. I buy directly from the wholesale end. On the retail end, they offer some colors that I cannot get. Even though being an authorized dealer, you would think I would be able to get those. But I told them, you know, just like with these, get the frame, mail them to me. I'll cut the lenses for you. So that's it. As you can see, as I keep talking, they keep getting lighter and lighter. So Adam in Cleveland, Tennessee. Oh, by the way, if anyone does want this frame, it sells for about 270. The invisible bifocal, the Essilor Ideal Advance, which is a digital freeform progressive lens, sells for $149.99. The Transitions Extra Active Gray or Brown adds $99.99. And again, the green is so new you can get that, but that adds $20, so it's $129.99. Now you got the blue flash mirror, which adds $69.99 for a total of $319.97. So again, thank you for the purchase of those lenses while I installed them into your Oakley metal plate. This is the 5038 is the model number, 22 is the matte black ice, uh, color. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.